saying good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to this, and I quote, uh, one minute, one minute, multi-award winning, highest rated YouTube presented, pan-European, trans-American, internationally acclaimed, global, and universally broadcast talk show to the billions. Yes, this is United Kingdom Talk. You heard it right, gang. It must be right because my best mate Ron wrote that on his Facebook thing uh, today. And of course, he's always right. He's always, always right. So I shall, uh, maybe I should introduce the show like that in future. What do you reckon? Is that, is that quite a good idea? Well, here we are. Yes, that all went very quick, didn't it, eh? Christmas Day, Boxing Day. Christmas Eve, it's finished. But there are people out there that would uh, look at my little opening video there and say, oh, why is he playing that? Christmas is over yet now. No, it's not. No, it's not. Christmas is Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, Christmas, and then the days that follow after that right the way through to New Year's Eve. So in this case, Christmas Saturday, Christmas Sunday, Christmas Monday, and and uh, Christmas Tuesday, and then New Year's Eve. Okay, or is that New Year's Day? Just a minute, one moment. Let me refer to my Barry Manilow calendar. One moment. Sorry, yes, Christmas Tuesday, and then New Year's Eve. Just referring to my Barry Manilow calendar. The new one is standing by, boys and girls. The new Barry Manilow calendar for this year. Look at, the, look at this, look at all these jobs. It's all full up, dear. I'm full up until June with my work. I can't believe it. All this work has poured in from my very, very good friend, Kelly Wilde, who is an internationally aff uh, acclaimed singer from Australia. And she also does, she has an agency. So I rang her. I haven't been, I've never really worked for an agent before. But I thought, oh, I can't be bothered to pick up the phone. Do you know what I mean? So I ring her and I say, oh, I've got, I need some work, Kelly. And she's provided me with all this work right the way through till June. I only have to pay her £15 a gig. It's not, it's not much, is it? 15 quid. I'm very pleased with that. Would you like a little peek? Would you, I know you would like, no, not at that. Please. Not at that. Would you like a little peek to see Barry Manilow's January photograph? Would you like that? No. Wait till next week. Then it, he will be revealed in all his glory. Thank you. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that today's show will not be a complete and utter shambles as last week's was. Because it all went a bit wrong. Let's not lie to you. It all went a little bit wrong. And uh, again, my best friend, friend Ron, who's always right because he wrote multi-award winning, highest rated YouTube presented, pan-European, trans-American, internationally acclaimed, global and university broadcast show to the millions, pointed out it all seemed to go downhill the moment I'd um, initiated the new Skype. Because we have a new Skype for the show now, boys and girls. And the Skype, if you want to Skype in, is United Kingdom Talk. The Skype username is United Kingdom Talk. Don't have Skype? Do not worry. There is two other methods. Oh, yes. Hundreds of ways that you can con contact the flow. We didn't go as far as getting a pager. You know, because they're a little bit old hat. Do you remember those pagers? A beep, 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 beep. And the early ones, right, they would bleep. And you wouldn't know who bleeped you. What was the point of that? Yet we all had one, didn't we? Did you have a pager? It would just beep, beep, beep. And you're thinking, oh, who's that? You would then have to make several phone calls and try and find out who it was bleeping you. I've just found a pair of scissors here. Should I cut some of my eyelash prayers off? I like doing that. Right. It's very... Oh, that hurts. I think I've got a bit of skin in. Am I bleeding? I'm not, I don't want to bleed all over you. Oh, you don't want that. Believe me, you don't want my blood all over you, dear. Oh, you might catch something dreadful. <laughs> Stop it now. Um, oh, where was I now? Oh, yes. Uh, my best friend, he said it was all due to when the Skype started going wrong. 
then and it wasn't actually the Skype going wrong, it was me not set it up correctly. And people started sending in messages, as indeed Shania has already this morning. Good morning to Shania on the beautiful Isley Widget. I-S-L-E-W-I-G-H-T. Isley Widget. Good morning, Shania. Oh, fellow churchgoer. How merry, full of grace. Yes, Shania, uh, who says, able to be with you today. Looking forward to the show. Make sure the mirror ball doesn't fall down like what happened in the show after Christmas last year. Do you remember that? I nearly died. No one cares. No one cares. You don't care, do you? I was nearly dead as the mirror ball fell off and hit me just on the back of the head. <coughs> no one cares. No messages of get well soon. Nothing like that. Just things that said LOL and ha ha. You know, as if it's amusing to make something out of people's misfortunes. Something that I would never, never do. Not in my entire life. You've got to be nice. You've got to be nice. Nope, that has been replaced at the moment, Shania, by the Revolving Star. Available from eBay. That actually looks a lot more expensive than it than it does, doesn't it? Because when I first saw it, I'll bet they're about 100 quid. No, that was about, I think it was, or I think it was only about eight pounds. But I've got to tell you, right, the, the corners on this star are actually very sharp. Can you see that there, darling? Actually, let me just check. Can you see that? Yes, you can. The corners on this are very sharp and it's not light. In fact, I go as far as saying that that is actually heavier than the middle mirror ball. So, you know, I don't want that to come. There'll be a gaping gash in my head and blood pouring over everywhere. And once again, you don't want that on you. You do not want that on you. So that, there we are. We have the revolving, revolving star at the moment, Shania. And I hope it, it makes this program just this little bit more entertaining, my love. Uh, good morning to Terry H, who's always slight this morning, who says his computer is running slow. What, yours or mine? Oh, yours or mine? Can someone tell me? Is my video running slow this morning? I can reduce this quality. That's, it's quite possible. Is it me or you? I need someone to tell me um, uh, that um, uh, they can see the show okay, so that then we know it's Terry or me. Is the light video running a bit slow this morning? Could someone come back and tell me this? That would be very nice of you to, to do so. But anyway, so we now have a new Skype. The Skype is United Kingdom Talk, all one word. There is also a new phone number, okay? Because what happened last week is that I, asked, I gave out the old phone number. Now, I thought that was OK. I thought the old phone number would work with the new Skype name, but it doesn't. It, that doesn't happen. You've got to have a new Skype number to go with a new Skype name, and you can't transfer the old one to the new one. So I've had to shut that old number down, which I think it's still working at the moment, although you won't be able to call in on it, and I have a new number, and that new... Oh, lovely Shania says it's okay at her end. And Kieran says your video is okay. Thank you very much, you two, Kieran and um, uh, uh, Shania. It's, it's always important that someone tells me it's all right. Because I don't know. You see, for all I know, it might be my end. You know, and, and, and therefore... That's why I ask you to tell me. So I appreciate you two letting me know that. So it is OK this end, uh, Terry. Terry says it is mine, hence me logging on late. Oh, um, it, but Terry, you might be accidentally doing a virus scan because that really slows your computer down. I've learned now on a Saturday, let me tell you, on a Saturday, I come in here at 10 o'clock, right, about quarter to 10, half past nine, quarter to 10, 10 o'clock, I switch on the computer and do a virus scan before I start anything. And that stops it automatically starting a, 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 a scan when it wants to. I've also now, anyone who's having like slow computer problems or strange things happening, I've now got an anti-malware pro uh, program as well. Now, I highly recommend this. I discovered this last year. Um, towards the end of last year when my very good friend Ben Parker, who also does karaoke nights, I told him I was having a few problems. He says, oh, you might have some malware on. I said, well, I've got the McAfee virus shield. He said, yeah, that's good, but you need this as well. Get yourself a malware program. And he mentioned this one, anti-malware, A-N-T-I, 
M A L W A R E. Now it's from a company called Malware Bytes. All right, M A L W A R E B Y T E S. Now do be careful. Now let me just get this for you. Malware Bytes. M A L where B Y T E S. There it is. Malwarebytes.org. All right. And I'm going to try and use the Twitter a little bit more. All right. Because we can do the show. And when it comes to showing you links and things like that, I know not everyone wants to be on the Facebook, but Twitter, uh, you might want to join us on that. So my Twitter is Chris Reardon UK. OK, so if you've got Twitter, Chris Reardon UK, that's the one there. Malware Bytes. Now, there is a free version, OK, or there is a buy version. I'm going to tweet that now. That link is now on, there we are, my Twitter. I'm trying, <laughs> I know other people have been doing this for years. And I just caught up with this. I'm trying to catch up, boys and girls. So if you follow me on the Twitter, Chris Reardon, all right? Chris, no, is it Chris Reardon UK? Do I actually? I need a new Twitter as well, don't I? United Kingdom talk one. I'll do that later. But for now, use my Twitter, Chris Reardon UK, and you'll find the Malware Bytes link on there. And that finds any malware in your computer. And I ran it once, and immediately after finishing that, I restarted the computer, although you suppose you don't have to, I suppose. But I immediately found an improvement in the performance of my computer. OK, so I highly recommend that. Have a look on my Twitter, Chris Reardon UK, and you'll find the link there to malwarebytes.org. So, uh, the new phone number. The new phone number is... O to, it's a local London number, OK? Not premium rate. 020 8144 3477. OK? Once again, 020 8144 3477. That's two new little things for you there, boys and girls. That's the new um, Skype and the new um, phone-in number as well. So if you want to try either of those today, feel free to do so. If you're watching a recording of the show, and many more people watch the recording than watch us live, then you can indeed send an email as well. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And I will do my best to notice when someone rings, because I don't always notice. Um, sometimes you get something come up in front of you and it's and I, d I don't know why I just don't see it <laughs> I need a team of people here like they have on BBC News 24 that's what we need all right um another item of shambles this week as pointed out by Gary Butler nephew Gary Butler thank you very much Gary Butler pointing it out on the Christmas Day short video because I do short videos every day as well you can find those at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk all right the short video on the Christmas Day there was a double clip there was a double clip because sometimes I'll record something and I'm like, oh I wasn't happy with that and then I'll do it again see and somehow I'd, I hadn't deleted one of these clips and it came on twice. Uh, so I've had to read. So there's and more shambles, more shambles. So last night I got back on. When did I get back? Boxing. I got back very late Christmas day night. I came straight up because I can't stand anything like that. I have to do, I have to have it done properly. Can't stand it. So I re-downloaded it back off YouTube onto my computer because you can do that with this app, with this um, program called iLivid. I-L-I-V-I-D. With that, I-L-I-V-I-D, you can actually download YouTube stuff. Did you know that? A lot of people say, oh, I'd love to be able to download my YouTube. Well, you can do it with something like that. I-L-I-V-I-D. I live it. So I downloaded it back to my pro, uh, computer, removed that bit and re-uploaded it again. So, so it's kind of in the wrong order on my list, but that doesn't matter. Um, so there was a double clip. Uh, so m even more shambles than it was just last on Saturday, dear. Horrendous. So that's that. Now, uh, 
Christmas television. How disappointing was that? Two programmes that I wanted to watch. That's it, two programmes. Not only that, I bought the Radio Times. £3.60, dear, for the Radio Times. How did that get suddenly so expensive? £3.60 for the Radio Times, I ask you. But I bought it anyway. And there were only two programmes I wanted to watch Christmas Day. Doctor Who and Downton Abbey. That's it. The rest of it was so dire. I mean, it really was. Number one, I missed Doctor Who because I was asleep. Oh, I hate to tell you this, boys and girls, but I had a little drink on Christmas afternoon. Two large glasses of Prosecco, as recommended by my good friend on LBC, Steve Allen. He goes on and on about this wine called Prosecco. I had two glasses. Well, I started talking, dear. I started talking even more than I do now. How horrendous is that? <laughs> and after Christmas dinner, we did presents and that and had some... Um, uh, 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 that, that wine I had and I finished that and then I went to bed but I go to bed for a couple of hours I got up and, and I, I actually set the alarm for 10 to 7 because for some reason I thought Doctor oh I've got itchy nose I thought Doctor Who uh, would be on at, um, at half past 7 but it wasn't it was on at half past 6 so I missed it and I came down the stairs and what was on the telly oh god Emmerdale and then Coronation Street and then he said, and I thought, oh, I can't act this crap television. On Christmas Day, do us a favour, will ya? Emmerdale, Coroner, where are all the Christmas specials? There aren't any anymore. What happened to all those? You know, you have, you have quiz shows on throughout the year and game shows. and Where are the Christmas specials? OK, there was a couple. Hang on, let me get, let me get my Radio Times. One moment, please. And then I can refer back to the programmes that you saw earlier. One moment. Here it is. The Radio Times Christmas edition for £3.60. Right, Christmas Day. Now let me find that now. Thank you. Uh, refer to my notes I made earlier. Christmas Day. I mean, you used to get these Christmas specials as well on um, uh, Christmas Eve and Boxing Day as well. So here we are. OK. Um, I miss the Queen's speech as well. <gasps> I miss the Queen's speech, which is just horrendous, really. I must put, get that on the BBC iPlayer. So let's have a look. BBC One. Now, that's where you should get all the good Christmas stuff. OK, we're at Top of the Pops Christmas. I don't know how I missed that. I would like to have seen that. Uh, I missed the Queen at three o'clock. I would like to see that. Where was I at three o'clock then? Oh, we were just in the living room chatting. Uh, Puss in Boots. I missed that. Puss in Boots, the film. Oh, actually, it's more good stuff than I thought. Do you know, I've got a terribly itchy nose today because I have been sneezing a lot. <laughs> up at my sister's I um, I sometimes no that's wrong often get terrible asthma in my sister's house and it is horrendous it was so bad I, I actually came back a day early it was awful and that's left me with a chest and my asthma has been really really good the best it's ever been recently over the last couple of weeks almost non-existent i walked into her house christmas eve no word of a lie within 20 minutes it started and it carries on and on and of course the longer you stay there the, the worse i think it is for you um uh and i've come back and it's not right now because it doesn't come it's, you don't leave the house and it comes right already no the damage is done do you know what I mean? So now it, it will carry on for some time. In, you know, sometimes when I wake up in the in at night and I reach my asthma thing, and as I breathe, it's not it's not doing it now. You can hear sort of um, how can I put this bubbles? You can hear bubbles in your chest. Anyone else got asthma with that sort of problem? It's not nice. It's a horrible thing. Anyway, back to this Strictly Come Dancing Christmas special. Well, okay, you know, fair enough. Not my cup of tea though. That Doctor Who, yes. I did watch it. Uh, Miranda. No, sorry, don't really find her funny. Call the midwife. 
don't really watch that. There we go. Here we go. East Enders. Oh God, so dreary. Mrs. Brown Boys. No, nope, not into that. Michael McIntyre's very Christmassy Christmas show. Don't like him. So <laughs> oh, it's worse on ITV. Look at this. Look at this. Um, five twenty. You've been framed. No. Nope. 550, Paul O'Grady, for the love of dogs. Oh, God. Uh, Emmerdale, 7. Here, here, here it comes, here it comes. 8 o'clock, Coronation Street. Dreary, dreary, dreary. 9 o'clock, Downton Abbey. Very good, very good. And that was on for two hours. But I didn't see it because I'd left and I was uh, in transit at that point, driving home. So that was your Christmas day. What a load of old crap that was. Very disappointing on the telly. What did you think of Christmas? Why not what Christmas Day television? Call in and let me know. On the Skype, United Kingdom Talk, or one word, or by telephone, 20 3477 Lines are open. Thank you. Lines are open. They are indeed. Um, Shania said, I did notice the double clip, thought it was my laptop. Well, it's back up there now, actually, Shania, in a different place. Uh, you'll have to go to the main um, YouTube page for that and uh it, it's gone now okay uh good morning to marge who's with us this morning who said i made it on time today sleeting outside there's no sleet here there's no snow there's no sleet my mate ron is desperate for snow he loves it i hate it i hate the snow and the sleet uh, she says she loves the tardis under the tree i'm so glad you noticed that marge I'm really pleased you noticed my new TARDIS. But it is a TARDIS with a difference. Look at this. Oh, it is a square cup. Oh, look what's inside. Something that I really, really hate. Just a little bit of it. Now, this beautiful TARDIS, this cup TARDIS, <coughs> was a present from my niece this year. And it's it's wonderful. The I don't think that the... It's got bits written round the top. I don't know if you can see that. Police box and all that. That's not a sticker, OK? That isn't a sticker. That is somehow printed on there. And I'm really, really pleased with this um, uh, from my niece. My niece also bought me... I'm going to show you this. I bought a, a few gifts up to show you. This, which is a... A stick-on... Big Ben, okay? So it gives you the, where is it now? There it is. It gives you the Big Ben clock, which is like a, a roll of sticky backed plastic, as, as mentioned on Blue Peter a few times. So that's the clock. And the idea is you peel that off and stick it on the wall somewhere. And it comes with a clock. And there's the clock thing, okay? So then you then stick that, or I think, you, or you might put it up with an hour, actually. Yeah, oh yeah. So you would put that up with an an hour or a screw in the picture. And she said, "Oh, uh, so uh, I think you might be able to put that up behind you." And I, I thought about it, and I can't. And the reason I can't is that is not a wall. It is a wall, but in front, th this is not. This is not painted. This is this stuff behind me there. That is actually material. And I, a couple of times a year, I like to change it to a different colour. Although I'm quite pleased with the um, with the mauve colour. I really like that colour there. Um, so I can't actually stick that on there. So thank you for that, Tracy. I bought some more presents up to show you. Now let me see. Oh, yes. Uh, from Andy. This is Ronnie's boyfriend. This lovely aftershave. Now, I'm not an aftershave person. But Ronnie bought me one of these back from, where did he go? Is it Abu Dhabi? Where's that place they all go in the Middle East? Uh, um, no, it's not Abu Dhabi, is it? Um, oh, gosh. Uh, Abu Dhabi, no. No, not Abu Dhabi. Oh, where's that place that everyone goes to in a, Dubai? That's it, Dubai. He bought me one of these coming back from Dubai, and it's lemon. Mm. It's not hurting me today because I haven't had a shave yet. You know, it's when you've had a shave, and then you spray, or you put... Um, 
aftershave on it. It really stings. This isn't stinging. Lovely, oh, it's beautiful. Lovely, refreshing smell of lemons. A little bit like this show, really, a lemon. <laughs> isn't it, eh? So Andy bought me that, Andy Webb. Thank you, dear. Very appreciative. And what else did I bring up to show you? Let me have a look. Uh, my best mate, he bought me this wonderful Tiffany lamp. I really like Tiffany stuff. You know, that's the stuff that's made out of coloured glass. I've got a little church downstairs and a butterfly. And now I've got, a, a, and it's big. Oh, it's, this is big. This is a very large lamp and it takes two bulbs. One for the bit of the top. OK, I put one in. It was a bit dim. So I've changed that. The LED bulbs. I've got all LED bulbs in the house now. And um, you also kind of uh, remove the bottom of the stand and that takes another bulb. So the whole thing lights up and it's beautiful. And it's a green one and it's dragonflies. And it's really, really beautiful. Lovely gift to have received there. Haven't got that up there with me because it's so um, heavy. I will, I'll try and show it to you on one of the short videos next week. All right. So I've got that. And then. Uh, some of the girls that come along to my karaoke nights, and they are very talented. Uh, there's Sky, there's Laura, and there's Kelly Kim. Now, Kelly Kim bought me, in a little box, this wonderful little witch. This witch from The Wizard of Oz, where... Off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. To see what a whiz, the whiz, the whiz, the ever the whiz there was. So she bought me this, okay, Wizard of Oz. And it is, in fact, not, not something to stand. It is, it is a, 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 a Christmas decoration to hang from the tree because there's a little hook there. Right? There's a little hook on her back and you put a bit of string there. And then you just hang it from your tree, you see. So that's my witch, beautiful. And one of the other girls, now I think it was Laura. I might have these the wrong way round, actually. I'm not sure. But she's very good at drawing. And look what she's drawn, because we are all Disney people. We love Disney. We love Disney. She has drawn me the most amazing picture of Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Under the sea, under the sea. I can sing that... Um, Little Mermaid one there. I can I sing the Little Mermaid one and also what's the other one? Poor unfortunate souls in pain in need. I can I do that one at karaoke now. Poor unfortunate souls, which you which you are probably one of. Are you a poor unfortunate soul? Well, we'll share that all together. So there's just a few of the little bits and pieces I got. Um, my sister. Um, is determined to make me into a real man, and she's bought me this electric... I asked her for a small electric screw, screwdriver, but she has bought me an electric screwdriver. comes a little bit, and it's got all these little bits in it, dear. Now, what do they do? I mean, is this for dentistry? I don't know. Loads of little bits of metal and things like that. I haven't tried it out yet. I wonder if it's charged. Let me try. Oh, yeah! I love it! Oh, yeah. Let's, shall we try something? Shall we see if I can fix something in my head? No. <laughs> there he is, scraping the enamel away on his teeth. The thin, last, last little thin bit of enamel that I've got before we have to go on to false teeth, I think. There we are. Marge, you've got false teeth, haven't you? I remember you telling me that, darling. And um, my sister also likes to make, make things like cookery type things and she's made me first like all these things in it and in a, nicely presented in a little box she made me look at this uh caramelized onion chutney very nice for putting on burgers veggie burgers of course uh, and then marmalade because she does wonderful marmalade let me see how much marmalade i got two jars well that's not gonna last very long sis an apple chutney now what do i do with apple chutney that probably will go on my corn burgers. And, and, get this. And these, these this, this is really, let me put this back in the box. Won't it? And I've got peppermint creams. Mmm. She made these with a very odd ant. Peppermint creams. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. And... 
the best part item is in here right big bag of homemade fudge mmm now I hate to tell you this but it's nearly finished please send more supplies sis homemade fudge uh, uh, oh oh that's gorgeous anyone else made fudge mmm so nice so there are <coughs> where's that going now there are a few of the um, bits and pieces that I received this year from people and thank you very much for those much appreciated oh a card came as well which I didn't read out last week I should have read this and um, this is from young Brandon there we are he sends a Christmas card in to Chris Merry Christmas dear lots of love from Brandon a loyal viewer of United Kingdom talk thank you Brandon for my very very special Christmas card my darling it is all appreciated all appreciated everything is appreciated and various people uh, where I go to work whether it's quiz or karaoke or something like that sent me a few bits and pieces uh, a nice card here from Ray Reynolds Ray used to be a DJ he's he's older than me now he's well into his 60s and uh, he sent me a card and a little DVD with bits and pieces on it so thank you very much Ray do you know my mouth is watering like anything after that um after that absolutely delicious fudge really really nice really really nice um good uh, terry says coronation street was quite good we've got snow at about five centimeters last night oh what can you do with five centimeters dear i mean quite frankly i'd look at it and tell it to get out of the house <laughs> oh snow i beg your pardon darling yes uh five centimeters of snow or oh, rather you than me i hate snow i hate snow and ice and cold I really do, Terry. In fact, now, you know, something has changed in me, Terry. I've got to tell you. You know what I'm like putting on my heating? Well, since the boiler went in, the moment it became cold, I switched it on and it's remained on all the time. Because I've got this thermostat thing in the room. So when it gets to the correct temperature, everything shuts off. Oh, it's wonderful. The first time, I've been here 20... Just a minute, mental arithmetic now taking place. Stand by, please. 20... I've been here 23, 22 years, and I've never, ever used the heating as I'm using it at the moment. I now, I've, It's on, and it's been on for a few weeks now, and it gets to the temperature, and then it shuts off. I've never... <laughs> the house has never been this warm. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's a good thing and I think that's helped with the asthma as well to be honest I really do um <laughs> oh god the bills uh gotta say hello today to Callum who is Shania's brother who is listening this morning good morning Callum Marge says I bet it's her dogs with your asthma um yes I think it probably is and there's there's nothing you can do about it I mean, my cat used to give me a problem here, but I kind of confined her now to the kitchen, which is warm. Don't get, you know, it's not cruel. It's warm in the kitchen. She's got a little bed there, blanket. She sleeps in various places at the moment. She's now moved onto the chair. We've got a table and chairs there. And she's moved on to top of one of the soft chairs and she sleeps on there at the moment, but she doesn't come into the main part of the house. Now, uh, back in January, if you remember when I went on holiday with my... um. Uh, nephew Jimmy that, that wonderful holiday we had in in Florida and uh, at that time I had living room uh, sorry uh, hallway decorated and my bedroom decorated and recarpeted so here was an opportunity to um, uh, because obviously the cat hairs in all this carpet here was an opportunity to improve the air in the house with a stroke so from that point I stopped her coming into the house sorry into the 
main part of the house. She comes into the kitchen, the utility room, and then that's it. She doesn't come into the main part of the house. And it is very, very tempting. Sometimes when you're sitting there watching a telly on your own, to go, oh, i just bring the cat in for a couple of minutes, you know, that would be all right on my me, on me lap or something like that. But no, you would then undo everything that you'd done. And once, once that's back in the carpet, it's, oh, you'll never get it out again. You know, I don't think, because you never get every single blooming hair out, will you? So that's what I did, and that did improve the um, asthma quite a lot. Terry says it's now running the malware scan. Yeah, let us know what you find. If you've never done it, th is that the one you... Um, did you just download the one I told you to download on my Twitter? Okay. So let us know what it finds. I bet it finds loads of stuff. You would be surprised. The first time you run it, it will find loads of stuff. OK, just to let you know. Now, don't forget, you can join in. Be nice to have a call this morning from someone. 020 8144 3477. 020 or Skype in United Kingdom Talk. All one word, United Kingdom Talk. Um, one of, oh, it was so annoying on the telly as well. Sows. You know the sows. Sows adverts on Christmas Eve. Do me a favour, you know, Sal starts Boxing Day, 9am. They've really pushed it this year. The commercialisation of Christmas has become even worse this year. Even worse. Have you noticed that as well? Sal's thing, on not only on the telly, but my sister kept getting Sal's texts on her mobile phone. I mean, that's just wrong, isn't it? On Christmas Eve... I don't know if she got any Christmas Day as well. She she might have actually got them on Christmas Day as well. I'm not sure. But just awful. I mean, absolutely awful, I think. Not right at all. Not right. Oh, Terry's sending a photo. One moment, please, Terry. Oh, no. Hang on. I, I might be able to even... Oh, there is a phone number coming from a London number. Answering the phone. Good morning. Who is on line... 5,623. Mary. Oh, it's Mary from Ireland. If you ever go across the sea to Ireland, then it maybe may at the dawning of the day. Good morning, Mary. Oh. Anyway, how's things? All right, thank you very much. How's things with you? That's the more important thing. Oh, things are grand. Things are grand. It was a weird Christmas. Why was it weird? Because we had it on Tuesday. Yeah. Because my daughter was heading off to Buenos Aires on Christmas Eve. Argentina. Argentina. Oh, do you remember? Sí, mi do you remember that that Argentine Argentine melody? Do you remember that? Dun 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 dun. I, I, I used to be able to dance to that. Do you remember that? That was a yeah. uh, that wasn't that used as a football thing. Yeah, football. What's football? Oh, yeah, that's what goes on in most people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, did you have a good Christmas? I did, thank you. Yes, I was at my sister's just for Christmas Day, and I actually came back Christmas night, which was actually a nice time to drive. Nothing on the road at all. Wonderful time to drive. And I had, um, uh... I thought I'll take it easy, you know, because I left, I left quite early, about 8 o'clock at night, and it's about a three-hour journey. I thought, well, I'll be back by about 11. Yeah. But I took it easy because my... Well, you always drive safely. Oh, yeah. My car said something like, you've got a hundred and... I don't know, 155 miles to go. And the sat-nav told me the distance was 145 miles. So I thought, well, there's 10 miles different. I'll take it easy, you know, and save fuel. As it happens, it didn't quite work out, because as time went on, it was getting less miles and more on the other one. So yeah. it got to the point of, I got to the M25 just past Watford, and then the yellow light came on. And uh -oh. the yellow light, I thought... OK, now what shall I carry on? I thought, no. Why no. So no then I went on to my sat-nav, which is on the mobile phone. I've got TomTom. -tom. And you can do it to find a petrol station. Yeah. So I found a petrol station. What it, what it told me to do was come off the M25, go around and then back up one junction to the Watford junction. And then as you come off that, 
just after that, a little bit further down the road, there's a Shell petrol station. And I filled yeah. up there. And the reason I filled up there, I did see uh, there was a BP one on the M1, Toddington Services. You heard of them? It's up north, isn't it? That's, well, uh, no, it's not really up north Toddington. That's near London. Uh, <laughs> they wanted... They wanted... Um, um, uh, they wanted, uh, oh gosh, they wanted one pound twenty nine a litre. One pound twenty nine. I thought. I thought you're taking the mick. Yeah, anyway, the shell, how much was the shell one? One pound nineteen. Mm-hmm. One pound nineteen. So there we are. But at the end of the day, you still have to get home. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You know. But yes. I wasn't. I was. I, that's that's like. So the one pound twenty nine. Now what's what's the what's the um, what is liters to gallons? I think it's four. Is it four liters to the gallon? Oh, hang on, I'll check one of my cookery books. Please do, darling. <laughs> have you got have you got a young child there that will know? They they know all about those. No, we don't no, know. no. They're we all don't off know. Getting educated. Ah, ah, ah. Who is it? They're all off getting educated. Yeah. You know, one, I, you know, Tara's gone to Buenos Aires. Right. Kira's just gone to finish a 40,000 word essay. Oh, how boring is that for him? And uh, oh. Mikey is choosing his university. That's your children, isn't it? Yeah, that's my kids. That's my kids. But yeah. we had the best Christmas. You've had a good time. We really, really did. I, there were six of us here on Tuesday for Christmas. Yeah. And everybody got <laughs> everybody the right presents. Kira even made her dad um, a personalised university challenge right. board game. Yeah, what can I say? What, with questions and all that business? Oh, yeah. And and your man's, uh, what's his name? Jeremy Paxman mask. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jeremy yeah. Paxman. Of course, you'll remember Bamba Gascoigne. Oh, yes. That's, yeah. I, f- yeah. I met him. I fixed his phone. <laughs> I did. I fixed. <laughs> and the door opened, you know, because you never know. When, you, when you're a telephone engineer, you don't really know who's... Who's going to answer the, phone, answer the door? So it was this beautiful house, very mm-hmm. old, on the river in Richmond. Now you tell me what that's worth, eh? I'm telling you. Do you know <laughs> Richmond Theatre? I could tell you because my hus- ex-husband's girlfriend has one on the river in Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> Push her in, dear. Push her in. <laughs> no, so there's Richmond Theatre. In front of Richmond Theatre is Richmond Green. And then you go further, there's some houses and then the river. He yeah. was in one of those houses. Beautiful old house. And I went in there and there were so many books. Books and books and books everywhere. And oh. he opened the door and I'm like, oh, you know, you're quite taken aback. Oh, hello. Come to fix your telephone. And that's it. You, you don't discuss. And he was really nice. Ever so nice. Is he still with us, Bamba Gascoigne? I don't know. No, I think he passed. Is he? Is he gone there? Would, that would have been about 20 years ago. Anyway, yeah, probably about 20 years ago. Anyway, we also had good news at Christmas. Um, there won't just be two new offspring in the family next right. year. Oh, there yes. There four. How many more would be there? Who's knocking all those out then? Uh, I couldn't say. I couldn't say. I couldn't <laughs> say. But um, I will be a great aunt again oh, and again lovely. and again. Lovely. And again. Lovely. So I've got to get myself a knitting machine. I had a. Uh, actually, would you like to see it? I've got a picture of Bamba Gascoigne here. One second. I can just bring that up for you, boys and girls. It's all, it's all very clever here, isn't it? Hang on. Images. 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 One moment, please. If only there was someone else doing these bits and pieces. Here we are. Here is a pic. Oh, that's not worked. One minute. What have I done? I d- maybe I didn't save then, did I? No, probably not. Oh, you probably put it in your Barry Manilow file. Oh, no, that's not worked. Hang on a minute. Is that it? No, that's not right. Uh, images. Come on. Why won't that open now? Because you didn't click the right button. No, I don't know why I can't do that. Let's move it to another one. Oh, I sent you a text 
of the best Christmas prezzy I've had. Oh, right. And it's, is it on um, the mobile phone, is it? It's on your phone, mobile. Oh, OK. I can't it's see um, from my best friend. Where is she? down um, just before Christmas. Um, I thought it was smelly stuff in the package, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. I opened it up and it's a handbag. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. How lovely. But it's a handbag shaped wine box. <laughs> Are you a bit of a wine drinker, Mary? Oh, you know me. I might have the odd tipple at well, Christmas I, I, and I you know, once every week. I had two <laughs> glasses Christmas afternoon. I was, I was, I was well gone, dear, because I don't drink. You don't do drink, I? though. I don't drink. No, you don't smoke. You don't eat anything other than vegetables. No, but I, I love you anyway. Hey. I love you anyway. <laughs> well, lovely to hear you, Mary. All right, darling. Happy days. Happy days are here again. Happy New Year. The sky above is here again. Who is it? Um, I can't remember. Oh, it could be, well, no, happy Mondays. Happy days are here again. Yes. Anyway, I better go. Anyway, lots of love, Chris. Lots of love, Mary. Bye bye, Take darling. Care. God bless us. Bye. Bye-bye. There's a lovely lady who's, uh, who's had a good Christmas, I'm pleased to say. Yeah, I was just talking about a little magical moment. Uh, the most magical moment I had this year um, was walking over to my um, nephew and his wife's house, which is in a Woodall Spa in Lincolnshire. He's about a 35-minute walk from my sister's house. So a bit of a walk and very nice to walk out there on Christmas Day. Nine o'clock in the morning, quiet and birds singing. Oh, it's a really lovely, lovely time. That is time of the day. That is to go out and have a walk, let me tell you. And I went into the house and I sat on the settee. And the little girl, Evie, is always very shy. And after a while, she came over and sat next to me. And she had this book of stickers. Now, she's, she's just learning to talk. So you can actually have a little bit of a conversation with her. Now and again, you know, when children talk to her, it takes a little while to tune in. A little bit like a foreigner. You know, when they start talking, you're like, what, what, what? And it just takes you a while to tune in to their accent. And it's the same with, with children, I think. And eventually the, the words were coming into my head and I was, <laughs> I was like... Um, uh, translating them back into adult language, although I don't like to be called an adult. I never grew up. Believe me, I never grew up. So she's got this book of stickers and she says, oh, that one. So, so I'm taking the stickers off and giving it to her. At this point, the little boy walks over. Now, he's much younger than her. He can just about walk. And he's standing in front of us. And uh, the evil... I'm sorry, boys. He goes, the evilness came out in me. And I said, OK, stick that on Harry's head. <laughs> <laughs> so naughty and she got the sticker and she stuck it on her <laughs> and I dreadful I'm such a naughty person and by the end of it we'd got all these stickers out and they were all stuck on Harry's head and then Stacy that's their mum my, my nephew's wife came in the room she stood at the door what are you doing to my son <laughs> he was covered in little stickers and they were like little snowflakes and presents and candy canes and things like that you know a little holly leaf as well and as i was taking the stickers out i was so she said so 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 she got to say that's holly she got ollie ollie the little girl and um present isn't isn't and she was learning the words as i was doing it um and then a coloring book came over so we did some coloring and of course with a child, um, they tend to get the colouring pen and they really push it down like that and colour it in. And I was trying to teach her to hold it gently, you know, and just move it from side to side. And she was colouring in Minnie Mouse, if I remember rightly. All different colours, pink and green and yellow. Now, I know what you're thinking. No, I didn't do that. I didn't tell her to colour um, Harry's head in as well. We didn't have all pen marks. Or, oh, that would have gone mad. Would have gone mad, Stacey. And that was really magical. 
to have a child sitting next to me like that and me trying to teach her to do things. I think that was probably the highlight of my time up there this time. It was so nice. Such a nice thing to do. It really was. After that, of course, we went uh, to my sister's and we all had dinner. dinner and my lovely niece, uh, Tracy, came along with a very happy husband. But those two are always so happy. How can you be? They must be on drugs. The, all four of them. The two adults and the children must be on drugs because they're always so happy. There's George, that's my niece Tracy's um, son, always smiling. And Emily, she, she's had a rough time. Yeah, she's been in hospital for about a week with um, uh, lung uh, um, problems, infections and things like that. So really not good at all, but um, uh, that's the way it is, you know. So a, a wonderful time was had by all. Uh, another phone call coming in. Good morning. Who is uh, that? Hi, Chris. It's Wendy. It's the lovely Wendy. Hello, Wendy. Hi, how are you? I'm all right, darling. Good. Um, I've just been sat here talking to myself on Skype, so I'm just wondering if you're getting me Skype messages, that's why I'm folding. <laughs> right, one minute. <laughs> Wendy Young. Yes, they're there, just haven't got All right, okay, yet, I'll darling. leave you in peace then. All right, Wendy. I thought I was sat there talking uh, to listen. myself. Uh, let me read, stay, uh, stay there and I'll read this out. Wendy sends this in about on the subject of the asthma. Hi, Chris, I'm watching a game for a bit before I go to a hospital again, because, um, is this okay to tell people this? Yes. Yeah, Wendy, Wendy's husband is, is actually quite ill at the moment in hospital. She says, re your asthma. My mum lives in Lincolnshire, as you know, and I, my asthma always gets much worse when I'm visiting there. Now, this is interesting. Doctors told me it's due to the change in air. Lots of farming land and plenty of dust from the crops and sprays. Plus, the air is damper. Please t t speak to your doctor about sim... Court. Court. Keep telling you about it, and I will keep telling you until you listen. <laughs> no, no, my asthma's been really good. I don't know, how, how far into the show did you join us today, Wendy? Oh, about half an hour ago. Oh, OK. My asthma, in the last couple of weeks, has been better than it's ever been. I've barely touched any puffers or anything like that, and it's been good, and it's been good, 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 up until the point I stepped into her house, and within mm. 20 minutes it all collapsed. It, uh, right. You know, it really <laughs> collapsed. Um, Maybe it's because uh, she's got dogs as well, hasn't she? She's got what, darling? Dogs. Yeah, there's two dogs and a cat. Yeah, maybe it could do with something to it do with their hair. Well that. The thing is, they always seem to be ill up there. They've always... some One member of the family has always got some sort of chest infection. Um, indeed, um, last year, um, towards the end of the year... Uh, my sister's mother-in-law died, who she'd looked after for a number of years. I remember. Ago, with, guess what? Chest problems. Mm. And she'd had really bad chest problems for, for ages up there. You mm. know, more and more puffer, eventually the oxygen cylinder, and then, um, very sadly, last year, they, they lost her. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think it, think it might be. Anyway, um... So your husband's very ill at the moment. I know you're very worried, and there's a few, few people, especially the Manilow girls, of which you are one, are you not? Yes. Did you hear what I said earlier? No. I had my calendar here, and I was tempting people, Wendy. I said, <laughs> would you like to have a little look at a Manilow picture? And then I snatched it away from the screen. <laughs> no, you will have to wait till January. All, all I will say to you, um, Wendy, <clears throat> is is that it's not over till the fat lady sings, darling. I know. Now, I'm fat, and I'm going to promise you I won't sing. You're not fat at all. <laughs> so, you're not fat. You know, you're, nowhere, no, you're nowhere near fat. Oh, do you want me to stand up and get it out for you? <laughs> no, is, You know, I, I've got no problems. If I'm driving to, you know, where, am I working tonight? Yeah, I'm working tonight. If I'm driving to work tonight, you know, and I have a flat tire, no problem. I'll just carry a knife with me, cut this off around my, my, around no, my waist, no. and stick it onto no, the wheel, no, dear. No, no, no. You could do that to, to me, but definitely not you. <laughs> definitely so, not you. Anyway, there's always hope. There's always hope. Mm -hmm. you just, you That's just, all I've got at the moment. You just keep going, lady. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to depress everybody and keep going on about it. So uh, I just wanted to give you a quick call because I didn't know whether you were getting the messages or all. Yeah, they're coming in. All, just all right, that was great. All right, take care, it. Chris. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Thanks for calling.
There's Bye. Wendy, lovely lady. She's a lovely lady. She's a Manilow girl. One of the original Manilow girls. Um, let's do a few more messages here. Um, Terry H says, oh, he's sent in a picture here. Okay, let me see if I can show that one. No, I can't show it. Terry sends a picture of this. I don't know why I don't seem to be able to do pictures today. Never mind. Uh, sends me a picture of the um, of the snow outside his house. And as I say, Terry, rather you than me. I do not like snow. No, thank you. Kieran says, morning, Chris. Uh, that shell garage you went to is one of the cheapest in the country. Plus, there's a 24 hour Starbucks next door. Oh, is it really? I didn't know that. But they were certainly cheap. One nineteen. What about yeah? That that's probably the, the least I've paid so far for diesel. So it was worth, you know, well, probably wasn't worth taking the risk of completely running out, was it? Um, Marge says uh, you showed photo of my messed up bumper. Yeah, I know. I know that's gone wrong there somewhere. I can't get the photos up this morning. Tell Wendy, sorry to hear her husband isn't well. Yeah, Marge, um, it's not been well for some time. He's in the hospital at the moment. And they are, of course, uh, doing the best they can for him. All right. Um, let's see if we get any more messages coming through here. Emails. Now, there was a couple of emails that... Um, oh, one second. Another phone call. I can't believe this. Good. Oh, I recognise that bloody number. Well, get on with it, then, caller. Speak. First time caller. First time caller, you lying bastard. Not a first oh, time language, caller. Please. This is a family show. A family show, yes. Yes, so we have none of that, none of them profanities, please. Do you want to, do you want to be my producer, then? Uh, yes. Do you want to come in and answer all the phones and in the phone room and all that? Yep, I do. Well, waiting. Are you here? Are you coming up the stairs? <laughs> Is it going to be a surprise visit? Hello, dear. How are you? Good morning. What's going on? How is, how's the show been? I'm very sorry. I've not been, I've not been listening because I've been hoovering. Hoover. Hoover. You've been hoovering? Yes, dear. I've been tidying oh. up the house after, uh, after my three days of manicness. Couldn't you have, couldn't you have bought the, um, couldn't you have had some headphones on or something like that? Uh, I could have, but... Um, I do it. I do it in my shorts. I do it in my boxer shorts when I clean. Uh, oh, I feel ill now. <laughs> oh, oh, how disgusting! Why? Don't Why? be so vile. You come when you vile. come and clean my shower. You do that in your boxer shorts as well. Are you trying to yeah. trying to tempt me? Are you? Because it's not working, darling. I don't darling. think so. You know, I don't think so. You know, now now that the years have passed and your ass is almost touching the floor, I'm really not interested in anything. Oh my god, to. your language is disgraceful oh, on the show shut today. Up. Will you shut your then, mouth, will you? Shut your mouth. There might be, there might be have children you been, listening. Have you been in a school pr playground and listened to how they talk to each other? Well, uh, then, Do you know what? You. Funny you should say that. My, my nephews, sometimes the way that they talk to each other, I've had to, st I've had to say to them, you know, you can't say things like that to each other. It's awful. What? Some of the things you say about, you know, you wanting them to die and stuff like that, it's awful, dear. <laughs> That's children right. Children are so cruel. When I was running Cub Scouts, now that would be 80... Gosh, 80... Did they have electricity then? 1880? Just about. 81, 82, right? These Cub Scouts, they would cuss each other's parents. It was awful. It yeah. was awful. Well, your your mum does this and your dad does this. Oh, dreadful. Dreadful so don't, people, don't dear. Don't pull me up dreadful. about using the word arse or bastard, please. Thank you very much. Oh, OK. All right, then I won't. Well, I'm just meaning to, to, to wish all of your, your viewers a very Merry Christmas, because I've never done a Christmas, a Christmas message this year, did I? No, thank you for not doing that. We I wasn't, I wasn't that. invited. I wasn't invited to do, to do one. I was, quite, I was waiting for the offer, waiting, and I didn't want to say anything. But no, no offer, no offer, no offer coming. No, well, quite frankly, we lost a lot of viewers due to that last year. I don't think you did. They fell off. The, the viewers Your viewers <laughs> increase when I'm on the show, dear. Increase. <laughs> increase. Well, come on, we've got to match up now, because I've got to get myself. I'm going to have some dinner, and then you'll be ready for you at two o'clock. OK, well, I'll be round at two o'clock. So a very Merry Christmas to all four of your viewers. Uh, excuse and me, I hope ten you have earlier. a very prosperous... Now that you're on, there's only six. A very prosperous and fantastic new year. Prosperous. Have you got anything Prosper planned for this year? Uh, what, for New Year? No, for, um, are, are you going anywhere or 
doing anything special? Oh, I don't know. Months? I don't know. Um, a, a very, a very dear friend of ours. Has no, 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 no need to mention that. No need to mention that. Yeah. To you. Well, as, anyway, a very dear friend of ours treats us that we can have a little breakaway summer, which is going to be very, very nice. And um, uh, so we're looking, but we'd like them to come with us. That's the thing. What? So we've got to speak to them about that. You are um, having a laugh. No, dear. Oh, no, dear. Somewhere nice, just for a few days. It'll be great fun. Um, uh, and in the new year, I'm starting my diet. I need to lose about half a stone. Oh, we're doing that together, aren't we? We certainly are, Half a stone? Dear. Half a stone? Yeah. You're having a laugh, ain't you? <laughs> Christ, Emma. It's like, you know, you're walking around you know, like a pregnant elephant. <sighs> I'm sorry you are. Filed, you know, dear. You're, you know, you're you know, filed today, dear. Yeah, you know when you see those. <laughs> you know when you see those pregnant ladies, and they sit on the seat, and the the t-shirt lifts up and shows their naked bump, right? You do that sometimes when you sit on my seat. I, but I haven't said anything yet. You look over, and the t-shirt is actually coming up over your stomach, and there's flesh to be seen. Oh, you're just God. waiting. You're just waiting to ridicule me on your show in front of all of your mil. Darling, All if of I your viewers. Darling, if I wanted to keep pigs, I would do. <gasps> Thank you. I'll see you at two o'clock, dearie. Okay, so cheerio. Have a very Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry and Christmas on behalf of my year. entire conglomerate. And thank you very much. Did you you didn't hear the openings of the show, did you? I didn't know, unfortunately. Oh, okay. I was what, what what was that? No, I'll put it back on playback for you later on, darling. Oh, fabulous. You do that, darling. All right, then. I'll see you at two o'clock. Cheerio. Thank you. Bye-bye, dear. Bye-bye. Bye. There we are. Best friend Ron's going to take me to Waitrose <laughs> for a little, little cup of tea later. Um, I just want to read you a couple of uh, emails that came in uh, over the short shows. Of course, while I was away over Christmas, I didn't wasn't able to get these. All right, so I'm going to read those. They both come from Marge. And we were talking about customer services the other day. Um, there was this awful woman in Lloyd's Chemist just down the road. Um, and she wasn't very nice for an elderly lady, so I wrote in about them. And Marge says, on the subject of customer services, she says, Customer service is terrible sometimes, but I've also met some kind and generous people who waited for me in businesses. They did thank me and was actually saying, Hack for a nice day and really meant it. So there's still good people in the world, I think, thank goodness. I don't really care about anything except making their hourly wage. But you know I'm £225. I'm considered overweight, but hopefully I'm not that way about being rude to the people. I am misunderstood quite often, but I don't want to be rude. I'm very nice, so fat does not always equal mean and rude, hopefully. Um, no, it doesn't. So I'm not quite sure where you're coming from there. What makes you think that being fat does not mean rude? Or does not not I don't get that. What um I'm very nice, so fat does not always No, not getting that Marge. Uh, my mother taught me about being considerate to people, not butting in when you're talking to someone, and I still hold to be true. Customer service is for the customers. I was always taught to leave my issues at home when I'm at work and don't take it out on customers. Yes, I, I, I make sure I do that as well. My philosophy is fire on fire. Build more fire to win out is usually to use intelligence and truth. And if you're in the right, you should win out, hopefully. Um, so thank you very much for that, Marge. And Marge sent in another one. Where's the other one now? Ah, on the subject of Auntie Brenda, who you may or may not have saw in one of our show, little shows last week. I just love your Auntie Brenda. I bet she is a sweetheart. Yes, she is. Uh, those cones look like the biscuits I used to make. I don't know what you make those with um, or what they are when you taste them, but homemade buttermilk biscuits are flour, baking soda, salt, pepper, milk, eggs, and you bake them. They sound nice. Homemade biscuits. My sister made some of those as well. They're downstairs. I didn't show you those. Shortbread biscuits she made. Very, very tasty. Mm. Um, does your aunt own a cat or does she live alone with our animals? Uh, no, she lives alone with our animals. Uh, but I think she'd like a cat. I do think she'd like a cat. And I have considered just going out and buying one and taking it round to her. But I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do, Marge. I'm really not. I don't know what you make those with or what 
Oh, I'm reading the wrong one, am I? Where's that gone there? Oh, there it is. Um, does she own a cat? There. And speaking of cat, how is Katie doing? I haven't heard you say anything about her or show her on the camera. Uh, she was on the show Christmas Eve. I think she was on the show Christmas Eve. Uh, I remember the Christmas you almost lost her. Do you know that was two years ago? Two years ago, and you nearly lost the cat Katie, but she, she pulled through. Hope you have a great holiday. We might get a flicker of snow, but nothing that will stick at least. I'm buying a little flower arrangement for my mum and placing it of rest in her garden. My brother and I will be celebrating together probably about two gift seats, and that's from Marge, and it's very nice to hear from you, Marge. And uh, finally today, Terry H says, Ronnie was speechless. Funny. <laughs> oh, I wish that happened a bit more often, Terry. I really do wish it happened a bit more often. Uh, Terry also says he's found 26 items of malware on his um, thing there. So I knew you would. I knew you would. The first time, you will find an awful lot of that. You will find an awful lot of that malware. Now, as I say, you've got the free one. I think that'll carry on for 30 days, after which it will ask you if you want to buy it. I I did actually buy mine. It's £25 a year. Um, but you don't. I don't think you actually need to. You could just stick with the free one, and then it will give you the option of carrying on. But my advice, Terry, um, once... Well, I, I actually do it once a day now. As soon as I fire up my computers, first thing in the morning, because it take a while to come on, I'll start the malware running and then go and have breakfast. And by the time I've had breakfast, it's all finished and it's worth doing. Um, since the first time I found malware, I haven't found any more. So that's interesting, that is. So you, you don't know where it's come from and just um, uh, follow the instructions on there. All right, Terry. That's it today, boys and girls. I'm going to disappear now. Uh, don't forget, I will have some short videos as well, as always, next week. You can find those by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and click on the large union flag at the top, and that will take you to all the recordings, all right? Thanks so much for watching and listening, and have a happy new year if you don't watch these short videos, and I shall see you for the next long show in 2015 with the new Barry Manilow calendar. See you soon, thanks. Bye-bye.